Hi, this is Gilly, Radio Prepper. It's going to be raining all weekend, so no mountain operations uh, this weekend, but yeah, it's good weather to build a kit on antenna. And I found a very good antenna design. It's for the uh, two meter band VHF, so uh, and on SSB or CW. So that's around 144.2 megahertz. Well, you know, CW calling frequency is uh, 144.050 and the uh, SSB calling frequency is 144.300. So 144.2 is a good point to uh, build the antenna. It's a very interesting ant antenna because it's actually kind of two delta loops uh, uh, pointing like an hourglass and it's actually called an hourglass antenna and I found the PDF on uh, on the web I'll put the link down below now I've been talking about 2 meter SSB before and I think it's really a band that is underused uh, mostly people use 2 meters for FM and repeaters but you know you can go and use a all mode radio and go on uh, the lower frequencies and uh, use uh, USB and CW and you really extend your range that way and but people are not using it and that's too bad uh, there used to be a lot of uh, mobile radios and portable radios uh, for 2 meter SSB and CW not anymore and, and that's a shame I mean I know the uh, MFJ 9402 and I want to get one of those but otherwise uh, new radios you know there just aren't any affordable new radios on 2 meter uh, you know all modes the good thing though is that uh, you can find a lot of them on the used market on eBay and other sites the hourglass antenna is two wavelengths long pretty long antenna really uh, but uh, its shape makes it uh, manageable uh, shape of an hourglass of course and the great advantage also is that the impedance of the antenna is 50 ohms so it means you won't need a tuner I really think 2 meter SSB and CW and digital modes uh, is a band that is uh, one of the cornerstones of radio prepping I think it's very important just like uh, 80 meters 40 meters you know those bands so this antenna is actually very easy to build and it's horizontally polarized so but it's a, a, a vertically shaped antenna so great advantage because it doesn't take that much space you can put it on a mast and uh, you know you will have a five decibel gain in two directions and it's almost omnidirectional, you know, so you can basically have an antenna that radiates pretty much all around, just a bit better in two directions, opposite directions, uh, you know, just, uh, you, I would compare it with uh, maybe, uh, well, make it compete with a Moxon antenna, and I put the link down below because I built a two meter Moxon. Uh, the Moxon is a great antenna because it's very small and uh, you know easy to build, cheap, can be used on a mask, is transportable, portable. Uh, this antenna is just as good as far as gain is concerned, but it's bi-directional and almost omnidirectional. So uh, I'm going to give it a shot and uh, we'll see how it goes, but hey, I got to start building it first. I need some wood glue, something generic, uh, that should do fine. I also bought some uh, wooden angles so that I can make a mast for the antenna and that will be uh, a kind of square tubing. So I have to glue them together. For the cross members I have this uh, piece of wood here. I didn't want to use a uh, full piece of wood for the mast because it would have been too heavy and I didn't want that. Also, the advantage, of course, is that uh, if I make a square tube, well, I can use that uh, to put my mast inside it and uh, hold the antenna. So uh, I think it's very useful that it's going to be a, a hollow tube, basically. The pieces I got are 2.4 meters long, but I only need about, well, the antenna is a meter 75, so uh, I only need a meter 85. I'll just add 10 centimeters and that should be about 6.1. I know because I'm 
the cross members I'm cutting at 39 centimeters. On the cross members I'm drilling the hole for the wire about one centimeter from the end. With most glues you have to rough up uh, the surface before gluing it, so I'm going to rough up the edges of my uh, angles here. I don't have acetone, but I'm going to use a bit of alcohol. Did I ever tell you about masking tape? Yeah, extremely useful. And now we have a square tube. I'll do this side here now, let it cure for a few hours, and uh, tonight I'll do the other side. Here I am marking the center of the cross piece and you will see why later. Now I need a flat surface here to glue the upper cross member and I'm just going to put a file to it. I'm going to uh, rough up the side of the cross member as well. The wire is supposed to be 4.3 meters, but I cut it a little bit longer at 4.4 meters and I marked here the center of the wire at 220. And I think I drilled my wire, my hole, a little bit too tight, but yeah, it's coming through. I'm aligning the mark on the wire to the mark on the cross member. I'm using epoxy instead of the wood glue because of course it's going to be much stronger and it needs to be. And I put a Klansman battery here too. <laughs> to put some weight on the joint so that it uh, it sets pretty well. Now I just have to wait, uh, I don't know, maybe an hour. It's pretty fast epoxy, so... So I attach the uh, bottom cross member here and uh, what I'm going to do here is cross here so that we have our hourglass shape and the bottom cross member is going to be just about here and here you can see the shape of the antenna. And of course, that's <laughs> when I'm about to test, is when we get a violent thunderstorm. And I'm not gonna be <laughs> on my terrace right now testing this. I am using a BNC adapter here, which I just attached with uh, some masking tape, because of course I probably will have to uh, shorten the wire. And here's the antenna. Sorry about the uh, vertical image here, but this is a uh, vertical antenna basically. Horizontally polarized once again and uh, maybe I'll put the analyzer on it and see what I get uh, just laying on the window here Now this antenna is not supposed to be used near metallic objects So and I think my uh, window frames are aluminum So I don't know how this is going to work, but hey, let's just have a look Well, I can't say I'm surprised the SWR is 4 to 1 across the band but the fact that it's flat across the band, uh, that's probably good news, but uh, I'm not surprised that it doesn't work inside. What I'm going to do now is just uh, reduce the wire to uh, 4.3 meters as the plans uh, call for and uh, glue epoxy the bottom cross member to the mast and uh, let it set so that I can test it as soon as this uh, thunderstorm uh, stops. Well, the storm's over. Lasted all but 10 minutes. Well, one good news and one bad news. <laughs> we'll start with the good news. The design works. It does get a very low SWR of 1.2 to 1. Now the bad news is that it's not on the correct frequency. It's on 140.5 MHz. And what I want is of course 144.2 MHz. So the wire is too long. Now this might be because of the velocity factor of the wire I'm using, but it means I will have to shorten the wire. Of course now it's late and I have to get up early to go to work tomorrow, so 
I will be adjusting the antenna in part two. Also, uh, you can expect some field tests uh, in the antenna's natural environment. <laughs> and it looks pretty promising so far. The SWR is good. I know it's just a matter of shortening the wire and that's all there is to it. Now, of course, what the efficiency will be, I don't know yet, but uh, I'm expecting good results. So stay tuned. Have a good one.